We have Dan Fitzpatrick. Put your hands together, Dan Fitzpatrick! Keep it going for Chris. Look at this car extravaganza. Range of personalities. Guys, uh, we covered this already, but happy Holy Week. Oh my gosh. So much holiness in one room, I think. This is a, a real blessing, yeah. I've, uh, I don't know about what you guys are planning. I'm actually celebrating Easter the traditional way this year. Yeah. Uh, my plans are I'm going to turn over my best friend to the police. That's going to be pretty cool. We all know the Easter story. Are you guys clear on that? That's a thing, right? Uh, yeah, Easter, we all know Jesus died on Friday, uh, came back to life on Sunday, right? I bet he was pretty pumped when he res uh, resurrected, but I bet he was also a little bit bummed that he slept through the entire weekend. You know? He's <laughs> like, couldn't you have killed me on a Tuesday? I had brunch plans! God damn it. Um, let's see, probably someone in here lives in New York. You guys are New Yorkers. Are you New Yorkers here? Yeah, you got it right there. Uh, be honest, do you like it? Are you into it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, I think, so, I think so too. I've been here about three years. People love to shit talk New York, but it's actually great. I love it here, and the strategy I've found best to enjoy New York living is to just lie to yourself every day. <laughs> That's all it takes to enjoy New York. You gotta spin things, you know? Like, here's a cool thing I realized recently. Every single person in this city has a rooftop garden if you count the mold growing on your ceiling. <laughs> it's very nice. Sometimes when I'm feeling depressed, I'll just go into my shower, look up, and enjoy the foliage. <laughs> it's like I'm in New Hampshire, or something like that. Yeah. In New York, it is expensive though, right? I, uh, I live with my girlfriend, so we gotta figure out the rent situation, put our heads together, which can be challenging at times, you know? Awkward conversations. Um, I found out not too long ago, that my girlfriend actually makes more money than I do. Nice. Yeah. But no, it didn't even bother me. Like, it didn't get to me for a second. Because, boy, is it not even close. <laughs> right? It's one of those things, if it was close, I could work a little bit harder. I could close that gap. But, guys, she is blowing me out of the water. It is insane. Yeah. It's not, like, my girlfriend makes so much more money than me, I think she might count as my legal guardian. <laughs> <laughs> that's possible. I'm not a lawyer, but... Yeah, so. It's weird. I don't even know how like two people the same age, roughly the same education, can make such different amounts of money. It's almost like we're getting paid in different types of currency, you know? Like you take a look at her bank vault, she's got like a giant pile of gold bricks, rubies and pearls, stuff like that. Then you look at my bank vault, uh, I've just got a small pile of those packets of extra buttons you get when you buy a new shirt. <laughs> That's my portfolio. Guys, she makes so much more money than me. Get this, her salary has a comma in it. <laughs> yeah. The only time I've had a comma in my salary is when there was a negative sign in front. It was very, very disturbing. Yeah. I, you know, being in a relationship, I've been uh, in mine a long time. It does change your entire life. I read this weird scientific study where uh, scientists figured out that for every year you spend in a relationship with somebody, whether you're like dating, married, whatever, but every year you're with someone, you lose two friends that you had from before. <laughs> That's a scientific fact. Two friends a year for every year. Uh, so I've been with my girlfriend six years, I think, uh, which comes out to 12 friends a year. Guys, I lost 12 friends in that span of time. And I gotta tell you, could not be happier about it. <laughs> That is great news. Good, an anti-friend crowd, my people. Yeah. I don't need that many friends, right? I'm not running for class president. Yeah. Like, I'll keep my best friends. They're cool. But, like, you have friends that just kind of pile up over time. You gain friends. They accumulate. Like, I look at my friend group the same way I look at the bundle of plastic bags I keep underneath my sink. Because yeah. you know? I'll get one, I'll look and think, like, oh, wow, this will really come in handy someday. But uh, then when I see them all lumped together, I realize they're mostly garbage. <laughs> like I said, anti-friend. I had to do a, a friend breakup recently. You guys ever do that? Yeah, it was like a lifelong childhood friend, but a weird situation. I was in the right, I can promise you. He did a weird thing. My friend got a new dog, and he named it the same name as me. <laughs> Which is... Messed up, right? Why is it you name a child after somebody? That's like an honor, right? You name an animal after someone? Kind of a dick move. Right? 
And let's be clear, like, I have a very normal human name. My name is Dan. It'd be a different story if I was called, like, Mittens or something. <laughs> like, if I was Mittens, then my friend wouldn't hate me. Yeah. My parents would. <laughs> but I'm competing with this little animal for his attention now. Like, he calls out Dan, and we both turn, hoping that he's talking to us. Spoiler, most time he's not talking to me. I'm losing this fight. And he loves this thing. I heard him... You know, I was hanging out with him. He looked down at this little dog the other day, and he said, Dan, you are the best boy in the world. That's what he said. This little, like, 14-pound thing. I was like, best boy in the world? Let's back up. Let's look at the facts. Uh, like, best boy in the world? Can he read or eat chocolate? <laughs> best boy in the world? He's not even the best Dan. Yeah. I'll do all that for you and more. So yeah, I've got no friends left at this point, that's cool. I need to get a hobby, I think. Uh, I've been getting into like ancestry DNA stuff now. You guys ever do that? It's pretty cool. It's, it's interesting, but sometimes you find out stuff about yourself you don't want to know. Like for me, I always thought growing up my entire life, I thought I was mostly Irish in terms of my background, right? Uh, but I finally heard back from 23andMe, and it turns out I was not supposed to send them my urine. <laughs> It's weird. That's my identity now, guys. People ask, like, oh, what part of uh, Ireland are your, are your ancestors from? I'm like, um, I think the part of Ireland where people know how many stamps it takes to send human waste in the mail. <laughs> that region. Yeah, that's a thing. But uh, it's getting nice out. You guys enjoy the beautiful weather today? That's cool. I know it was getting hot today because I saw the classic New York summer sign. I went through uh, Times Square and saw that none of the Times Square Elmos were even attempting to wear their heads. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm fucking Elmo, take a picture. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, I am, uh, I'm very excited for my favorite summertime activity, which is uh, drinking. That's very cool. Can't do it in the winter, fall, spring, but summer is peak time. You can drink outside in the summer, which is pretty great. I get uh, taken to a lot of rooftop bars. By people, those are so popular, right? You go to rooftop bar, it's packed up there. I wonder why so many people love rooftop bars. I do have a theory. I think people love rooftop bars because after they make you pay nine dollars for a light beer, uh, they also give you a tall building to jump off of. <laughs> so, that's just a good deal. Put the kind of bar in New York City. And so I drink there. A uh, weird fun fact about me too. I work in an office during the day. My office has a keg. We have a beer tap in the office. You can get a drink anytime you want. You don't even need a permission slip, which is insane. We work. You got it, man. He's on board, part of the team. Anti friends, pro we work. We're all <laughs> no friends at we work. Only competitors. But uh, yeah, I gotta say though, like I'm all for partying, right? But uh, I'm actually a little bit uncomfortable having booze just out and about in the workplace, you know. Because just drinking at work is weird. Because every other job I had before this, I would just uh, sneak in my own booze. <laughs> you guys ever try that? Yeah. Smuggle alcohol to work? Yeah. It's actually not that hard, right? It turns out the uh, difference between a thermos and a flask, just a state of mind. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't need to drink at the office. I get tricked into drinking during the day at bars, usually on ground level, but uh, they do a thing now I see a lot where they put up funny signs and trick you into drinking more drinks. Because you like, you know, laugh, you get more drinks. Uh, the best bar sign I've ever seen in my life was on the sandwich board outside a bar on a sidewalk, and the sign said, hey, alcohol might not solve all your problems, but neither will water. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a ballsy marketing stance for an actual business to take, <laughs> don't you think? You're never gonna see like any sort of drug get away with that kind of advertising, I think. You're never gonna be like walking through the bad part of town, go past a crack den, and see a sign out front that's like, hey, crystal meth might make your teeth fall out, but so will jelly beans. <laughs> All right, I'm Dan Fitzpatrick. You guys have a lot of fun. Keep it going for the rest of the show. Dan Fitzpatrick! Good job.